lytter til din lokale radio i Aarhus på FM 98,7 MHz og 89,5 MHz. Ungdomsradio. Hello everyone, this is Marta and this is Anna and this is You've Got Five Options show. Again with some uh, delicate technical issues and no intro, but uh, we are getting better every, uh, well actually no, we are not getting better every week. We, it's, it's all good. It's all good, yes, and today we have yet another new technician. Sven, because apparently for some reason our technicians, they don't want to work with us. So we are being like given to a new technician every two weeks because it's too much pressure. Yeah. Well, uh, I have the other view of it. I think they want to give more opportunities to more technicians to have the wonderful experience of being with us at the live show. This, this is really wonderful. And I is that true? Sven, is this true? Uh, yes, it is. Yes, definitely. Okay, good. Oh, okay, I'm not sure if we could hear you. No, uh, but it, it's all this. Um, and here you are. Mistakes. Yes. So this is a proof that we have a new technician today. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's a nice radio voice you have there, Sven. Um, you probably say that to all your technicians. Uh, mm, probably. <laughs> probably. <laughs> um. Why would you assume so? We are just welcoming you and you have a very nice radio voice. So welcome to our live show. Thank you. Very welcome. And uh, we are, uh, this is our third live show. And this time we decided to come with a topic. And we actually have announced this topic on our Facebook uh, fan page and also on our website. Today we want to talk about fear and, and courage. courage nice fear and courage and we have asked you guys to send us some stories about uh, overcoming fear and we actually have received some really really nice and really heartwarming beautiful stories and we will talk about them today as well so um, it's it's really fantastic that you decided to share your uh, experiences with us um, because, yeah, we didn't know if someone will send anything, but what we got really, really was above our expectations, if I'm to be honest. Yeah, the stories are really amazing and they show the courage yeah. in the two ladies that have sent the stories. We are really yeah, grateful. Thank you. Yeah, actually, the, the second story that we will present today, we have received uh, today in the morning. And uh, it was, uh, yeah, I was deeply, deeply touched and I'm really looking forward to, to read it for you guys. Or maybe Marta will read it or maybe Sven will read it. We will see. No, he will not. He doesn't want to. Okay. <laughs> okay, Sven. Okay. So you can be the silent witness of our radio show. Yeah. So topic of fear. Marta, do you like fear? Do I like fear? Yes. That's a very interesting question. Well, no. <laughs> well, some people, well, some people like to be afraid. And I think those are those guys who like to watch horror movies. That could be for starters, right? Okay. I must say that I try to be like always looking for the bright side of everything. And I do have to admit that there is a part of fear that is useful. And we have needed it over time, like mainly long time ago, but it has, you know, helped our species to survive. So uh, I don't like feeling the fear and I would like to invite less fear in my life. But I do acknowledge that there is also the useful part of the fear. And I'm grateful to Mother Nature for equipping us in that when it's needed. Yeah, actually, we will we will talk uh, in a moment a little bit uh about what fear is and from where it came from 
and uh, is it useful in some situations. But now when I started to think about it, you know, people who are watching horror movies, they they want to be afraid a little bit. So there has to be something pleasant in it. And I think it's just the adrenaline pump you are getting from it. Because one of the consequences of being afraid is to feel the adrenaline. Yeah, and I think it is also in some way probably processing through fear. It's uh, probably for some people also like taming the beast kind of experience. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it was like this for me because otherwise I was a really strange kid, you know. I, I watched a lot of horror movies when I was a kid and when I was a teenager as well. And you were joining me as well in those uh, Friday nights horror movies marathons. Yeah, we were watching a lot of thrillers and horror movies in our teenage years. And then I had this experience when I went to see The Ring 2 to the, in, at, at the cinema. Mm -hmm. And I never watched a horror movie since. <laughs> Ring 2? Yeah. I haven't seen that. I saw The Ring 1 and that was, oh my God. And I saw this, the, the original is, it's the Asian version. I don't really want to like now be a total ignorant. It's either... Uh, uh, Japanese, Korean, I don't know, but uh, that was a scary movie. My God, I remember. Sven, have you seen Ring? Um, no, I'm not seeing a lot of movies. No, you don't watch horrors? No, I'm too scared. Oh, exactly. So some of you can, uh, I know a lot of people who are actually avoiding watching horror movies because they don't like to be afraid. No. That, because there's no reason to be afraid. It, it's funny if you have a roller coaster, you can get this uh, feeling in your stomachs and oh my god, I'm going to die. But <laughs> just just uh, looking at uh, some horror movie just make you scared. There's no um, you you don't get out of the feeling, mm -hmm. and I don't like that. Okay. I okay. want to get out of the feeling, but then of course it's it's funny to say. <gasps> Disgusting. Yeah. Well, yeah, I, I think there is something in what you are saying. That's why there are many people with many preferences. I until today's day, I enjoy watching horror movies, uh, but uh, I don't do it as often as I did in the past. I have to admit. Yeah. But OK, let's just start with a question. What fear actually is? And now I feel like some teacher in a primary school asking a question to the students in a class. But uh, I'm asking you guys, uh, and you cannot answer, unless you want to answer because we have our co computers on, so you can always send us a message. Uh, but what actually is fear? Um, fear is, first of all, uh, well, I like to describe it as an alarm system that was developed by our bodies in order to warn us for a possible danger. So there is an emotion of fear, and there is a very basic biological emotion we feel when we or our brain register something as dangerous. And I think we all know this feeling, you know, you uh, hear something weird in the darkness and suddenly, you know, your your blood pressure rises and your heart beat faster and maybe your hands are sweaty and you get all alerted. This is the, the instinct, the emotion of, of, of fear. And uh, that actually is that part that Marta has mentioned. It's the useful part because the, well, that is a theory, but I like this theory. Evolutionary psychology is a theory that explains why we have certain um, emotions or warning system, systems or adaptation systems, uh, how they were developed. And they were developed in the prehistoric times when apparently we were all very happy living in jungles and forests and running around naked. And at that time, the reality was totally different. And in order to survive, because the world was not so beautiful and predictable as it is right now, we had to develop a lot of um, yeah, evolutionary strategies in order to, to live. And fear was one of those strategies, that emotion, that warning system, that something is wrong or something might be wrong, be careful, is actually a very useful thing. 
Don't you think, Marta? Yeah, definitely. So basically, we still need it. That part we need because sometimes, for example, when we are encountering a tiger on our way to work. Yes, it <laughs> happens like every second week, you know. There is a tiger on the street in Vila, yeah? Yeah, okay. But in a case of we were to encounter something really dangerous, it could be, okay, the man with the gun is probably more likely to happen. Mm -hmm. It's really useful to us still to feel the fear or may, even, you know, I think maybe a better example is if we are to cross a street and we have no fear and we just enter to the street, regardless of the cars and buses and so on, not very useful. So having that warning, something bigger that might kill me, like a car, is very useful. So yes, that part is still useful even in our everyday life. Yes, that's true. But you know, actually, uh, there is an interesting thing you have said here, Marta, because when I see a bus, you know, like a big bus, because buses I bar I are by definition quite big. And to be honest, I'm afraid of buses because, you know, I, I, I was um, biking quite a lot in Denmark. And, you know, buses always scared me when you are on a bicycle road and there is a big bus next to you. And I'm from Poland. And, you know, the, the things that bikers are doing here, that it's like a death wish on Polish road, you know, at, at least back in a day. So I remember so many times when I was... Uh, you know, like uh, standing on the lights and the bus was next to me and the bus was allowing me to go first. And I didn't understood that message because in Poland that was not happening. So I was always really afraid to cross first, even if the bus driver was allowing me to go. And now the funny thing is that, you know, by very like a normal observation, the bus can kill me. Yes, that is something that you can learn. But actually, each time I was starting to bike because I saw, okay, this guy is not giving up. He really wants to give me away. I had this feeling, sensation of, you know, shivers and a little bit of a, like biological anxiety. Oh, my God, will he start the engine? And that's the that's the fear. That's the that's this panic attack, you know, and we have it many times. And um, even if we kind of know that we are safe, but yet there is some uncertainty involved. I don't know if you know what I mean. Yeah, I know what you mean. And I, I think that also uh, we have to talk a little bit about the level of fear. Mm -hmm. Because there is the uh, good or maybe healthy or whatever we want to call it level of fear that simply keeps us safe. That yeah. is needed for our survivor. And then when the fear starts escalating towards panic, terror, not very useful. No, you are right. It's um, actually quite uh, quite unuseful, I would say. It, it keeps you in a little dark box and you are afraid to, to basically be alive. Yeah, so of course it it's has to do... Traumatic. Yeah, it, of course, it has to do a lot because one thing that I was reading that I found very useful in uh, understanding fear was like the first biological reaction that you can measure, you know, seeing your pulse going up, the adrenaline is pumped and so on. That's something that happens to all of us. But then a very complex mechanism takes over and that one will depend on our setup personality, our experiences. So from the very first reaction that is common to at least majority of the people, then a very complex mechanism takes over. And that's the part that is more or less useful. Yes, uh, I I totally agree because uh, this is true, Marta. I think that uh, feeling the impulse or this kind of like a um, biological uh, yeah, fear that's something that we all fear. I uh, I read once that, and it's actually, the uh, it's developed in our brains because I've read about a lady who was having a brain damage. She felt no fear, like literally no fear at all. So it is actually conditioned in our brain. And you know, um, we were also talking about it, that the first reaction is you, Marta, you said it very right, you know, you, you get your palms sweaty, you uh, get your heart pumping and all this kind of thing, because you are ready for some physical action. And we actually have, Sven, are you trying to give me a secret message via Morse code? My pulse. It's your pulse. Yes. Okay. 
So this is your pulse. That's yes. So are you afraid? Um, in the beginning of this program, I really was afraid. Really? Yes. Why? Because of all this technology, I couldn't understand. Okay. That's actually an interesting thing, and we'll talk about this in a moment. Because, yeah, uh, I, I, I know what you are heading to, but did you had that kind of like a reaction, physical reaction, that you felt your blood pumping a little bit faster? Yes? Definitely. And, Definitely. This, is, and this is something that actually can come from a conditioning. Like, for instance... Um, we were talking about the wild animals or, you know, even the sounds like when the, it's the, the middle of the night and you hear a weird sound, you usually get this impulse of being afraid, right? You don't know what it is. And most of the time it's nothing, you know, we rarely have like bulgars or ghosts. It's probably something felt in the night, but it's dark. You cannot identify it and your brain perceives it as a danger and that's the conditioning from the very old times and uh, there are actually three it, it is said three basic biological responses to that impulse and it's the flight fight and freeze response and you can either flight meaning you can run away so you hear something dangerous or there is a weird situation you get the impulse and you run that's why by the way guys uh, Many of people uh, in, a, in a state of a huge fear, they are like, you know, peeing on themselves or shitting on themselves. And you know why? Because the, uh, you need to release all the additional weight from your body so you can run. That's actually how biology work, works. That's why we do it. I, I never did it, of course. Did you do it? No. No. No, we never did. No. And then... Or the other response is to fight. So basically, we get this aggressor, um, let's say, attitude. We, we get adrenaline and we are ready to, to strike, to, to hit the danger. Or we freeze. So we pretty much just don't move and we feel paralyzed. And uh, actually, there are some situations when even I feel paralyzed, when I feel or not feel, I think there is a danger. And we had that situation, Marta, at my place. Some time ago, remember? Yes. Do you want to say something about it? No. No, we will not talk about it. No, but uh, and those are those three main responses, the biological responses that we have. And the, depending if we, I think it depends on either the personality or the experiences or whatever that is, we can either react uh, ready to run, ready to fight, or we will freeze. And that's pretty common for every single human being. And that's also pretty okay, because this is what kept us alive long time ago, when we were perceiving something as dangerous. But as you, Marta, said, what we will do with that impulse of fear, that emotion afterwards, is actually what defines the quality of our life, right? Yeah, so definitely our response to fear and how we will and, and also here we have to recognize between a useful response, meaning we are actually in danger and uh, between a situation where our brain reacts as if we were in danger and we are not. That's where the quality of life uh, comes into play. Because right now we were discussing the actual situations where there is something to be afraid of, uh, fact-based. Yeah, mm -hmm. but uh, I think the interesting part that we will probably soon uh, move to is the part when we get afraid, where there is nothing to be afraid of. Yeah, and that is, uh, you know, also our brain can trick us because, as I give the example of, you know, a weird noise in the middle of the night, you don't know what what it is. And most of the times, actually by experience, we can say that most of the, the times probably it's just some noise. But yet the reaction is there. Um, that's, that's one thing. But the other thing is, is what Shumarta said, what do we do with these reactions afterwards? And, you know, there are, um, there, there can be a lot of things you do, but I think it all depends on your thoughts. What you allow to your head to, to do with that impulse? 
Well, I think thoughts is one thing because you might not be able to think in that particular moment. I think there is, like I said, like I really like this explanation that it's a very complex mechanism mm -hmm. because it's also based on our experiences and it's based on our personality. Mm -hmm. So thoughts, hmm, I'm not sure how much you really think or are able to think in a situation where you're afraid and depends also on the level of fear. Mm -hmm. So it's not easily explainable. That's what I was reading, that you can't just easily explain it, what happens later. Well, you know, I think it is a complex topic, but I'm trying to, to imagine, for instance, when something like this happens, you know, you hear a weird sound, it's dark, you have a reaction, you get, you know, the biological uh, alarm system is on, danger, danger, and then there are people who can just freak out and hide themselves in a closet and sit there for half of the night with no other additional sounds going on. But they will just start to think, you know, probably it's a burglar or someone downstairs or maybe I have a ghost and so on. And these thoughts are taking over. This is what I mean that I think that in some cases it can be thoughts based. What do you think, Marta? Oh, definitely. in. In, in some cases, it can be thought based. Yeah, so I, I think that uh, that but I agree that at the beginning, it's very difficult to control. I don't really think we I don't think we think when things like this are happening, you know, we, we just have the reaction. But then afterwards, it's about what we do with that impulse. And I think even in those situations, you can either just say, OK, probably something just felt I, I don't hear anything anymore or you can just like escalate this small incident into into an actual spiral of panic and terror and that's what i mean that that's not so easy because it's not just thought it's also based on your personality and on your uh, on the events that have happened to, in your life because mm -hmm. then you will be more or less prone to run those thoughts, you will have more or less possibility to manage those thoughts yeah. and so on. So yes, a thought comes, of course, at some point. But what will you do with that thought? That depends on uh, those uh, yeah, previous events, experiences, beliefs and um, yeah, personality and so on. Yeah, I, I think so too, Marta. Do you think you can work with that? I think you can definitely work with that. Yes, there are therapies. Mm -hmm. There are several different uh, ways, approaches to how to uh, work with that fear. So definitely, yes, definitely. Okay. That's a comforting thought for all of us who are sitting half of the night in a closet, right? Yes. Yes. Are you one of those? I am. I have not ever been sitting in a closet for half of the night. No, <laughs> no, really, really. OK, OK. But uh, Marta, what normally is your response to that kind of situations? Do you have flight, freeze or fight? I think that that's the funny enough. It depends. And that's where uh, that's where it gets complex. And that's where it really simply depends on a situation. So, I can have any of the three and I think any human being can have any of the three responses. Mm -hmm. Yeah, B but you know, usually I have actually one dominative response. It's the, the fight, although I don't go to fight, but I prefer to like uh, just go and see what is happening instead of, for instance, run away, you know. So I but I think it, 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 it is indeed depending on the personality. But we have established that fear is biological. We have established that fear is actually useful as an alarm system. And that was its main design. That's why we have it. But then we also uh, pointed out that many people are living in fear that is not necessarily useful. And actually, it's um, many times based on things that are not there. So um, why living in fear is limiting? I know it's a stupid question. But uh, Marta, why living in fear is limiting? Why do you think? So of course, uh, there are different things that we could, uh, we have been discussing this mechanism of fear right now uh, for a long time. But of course, 
uh, if you are living in the actual fear, like, I don't know, under conditions of war or something, that will be something that is very limiting and will impact your life in a severe way. But if we take an average person living in a Western society where the fear, the everyday fear is more related to something that we either imagine or something that is not realistic and fact based. I mean, we are not under a real danger of losing our life every time we go out shopping. <laughs> like in the past, every time you would go get food, you are in actual danger of dying. Yeah. Right now, if you go to your grocery store, the uh, chance that you will die is not that uh, strong. Right. Mm. And yet we deal with quite a lot of fear in our life which is very interesting. And I like this uh, concept that we, the fear of the unknown, that's the one where we, uh, yeah, that's the one where our brain is conditioned to react in the same way as if there was the real physical danger. So that's something that might limit us in uh, in the modern Western society times, because our brain is primitive and has the same reaction to the unknown, if it's a, like a potential tiger or if it's a potential setting up your own business. Yeah, that's actually is the, that is the funny thing, because um, and we talked about it quite a lot, you know, um, I think unknown is something that scares us the most. And I think that the part of it is to blame in those old times when when you were un unsure of your circumstances and you were unsure what is happening around you. And then you started to feel fear. And as you said, Marta, this is pretty uh, safe times. I'm, I, I would assume, of course, you know, not totally safe, but we are not um, really surrounded by dangers. Yet there are situations that are having a level of, you know, a surprise or yeah, they are unknown. And I think every time we are making a major decision about changing our life, this is where the fear kicks in, because it's exactly that fear of unknown. unknown. Will I make it? Will it be good for me? Um, will I get hurt? Will I fail? And we cannot make a distinction that those things like, you know, OK, maybe you will get hurt or maybe you will fail, but this will not kill you. We cannot make that distinction. And that's when the fear kicks in and it can literally paralyze us from doing stuff or keep us in a comfort zone for the rest of our lives. Yes. And we have these wonderful stories that yeah. we have received when we asked people uh, because the questions that we have asked was could you guys share with us your stories of fear and courage so we ask for different types of stories like can you give us your 20 second of courage the moment where you just like kind of switched off your thinking and you went for something and you got your life changed for good something really great happened or maybe you would like to share your stories where you were like you know i feel the fear and i do it anyway so you are able to learn to be with your fear and you are able to progress in your life anyhow. And then, of course, there are also the stories of overcoming fear in your everyday life. Like when you are living with a big amount of fear and you don't like it, you would like to change it. You would like to have less fear in your life. Uh, then, yes, we, we ask for the different types of the stories that you have. And we got to very beautiful stories from yes. two very brave girls. Yes, and uh, both of stories are great. And maybe we can just read the first story. Definitely. Mark, would you like to read it or should I? Uh, how you prefer, however you prefer. I, I think you're closer to the computer. OK, so the first story we would like to share with you is Claudia's story. So listen, guys. I would like to share my story, which has changed my life and the way I see my life and my future. I was working in an office for three years after my graduation, two different companies, and everything was great at the beginning. 
I liked my colleagues, my job, my tasks, but I did not feel like it was me. I did not feel the job was fulfilling. I did not feel like I was making a difference or had any influence in the decisions making processes. Especially my second job, I hated it. I hated the feeling I had every morning when I had to get up and drive 100 kilometers to the office. I hated my desk, my computer, the canteen. I was really not happy in that place. Luckily, I found good friends in there who helped me survive the long 10 months. I got a big passion for sports and fitness and I would spend my days looking at my watch waiting for 4.30 so that I could go back to Aarhus and run my class or train with someone or simply get on the trade mill and spend 40 minutes there. One day I saw my Akase, that's uh, guys for e everyone who is outside of Denmark, it's a, a place where... You, what is Akase? Can you explain this? <laughs> uh, okay, I will try. Uh, you ask the expert, obviously. I think it's uh, an employment insurance uh, fund, kind yes. of organization that takes care of your unemployment and they also help people activate again. So they have some courses. Okay. That, but, but you have to pay for that. You have to pay for that for a, uh, yeah, for a while so that you can then get the benefits out of it, of course. So that act has uh, organized a workshop called Goal Mapping and I attended it. It took me six hours to get all motivated, believe in my dream that I have always had. I came home all excited and started telling my boyfriend what happened during the day, how I would like to do what I love how the workshop makes you realize that you what you truly want in your life and he said just quit your job and become a full-time personal trainer and my question was like are you out of your mind and in my head a thousands of thoughts popped up how will we survive how will I survive? How will I tell my friends and parents I am quitting a job in a corporation to work at the gym? But you know what? I thought you have one life. Let's do it. I went to work the day after and I sent my resignation letter to my boss. Wow. That is, uh, that is a story. That uh, actually I... Um I have to say that uh, I kind of knew the story, but I, I got it now. And when Marta read it, uh, it's pretty unbelievable that uh, the, the girl that sent it to us, she did it from one day to another. And um, we were actually thinking where to place the story. Is it 20 seconds of courage or is it overcoming a fear? But uh, there is so many interesting informations in, in the story. And one of the things that really mm, made me think was, what will I tell my friends? What will I tell my parents? I'm quitting a job in a corporation to work at the gym. Yeah, and for me, the most amazing is really like, how will we survive? How will I survive? So yeah. it's like, it's like really bringing you to the place where you are actually questioning your survival because yeah. you want to change a safe job in corporation into being self-employed and doing what you love. Yeah, and I, I think the, the, the thing is like, what, what, and I know exactly what thoughts are running in your head. It's like, it, it's amazing, you know, I can like uh, get homeless or, oh my God, how will I buy food or something? It's, it's unbelievable what comes to your head in situations like that. So you really have that reaction of like questioning your survivor, survival. Mm -hmm. That's why the, you know, that's why the fear kicks in. Yeah, and it's really strong. And yet some of the people like Claudia could take that, you know, fear on their chin gather up their courage and just go and do it. Yeah, and I'm actually wondering because we, we don't have uh, more background to this story. I was uh, thinking um, because it was not mentioned how how long Claudia was Claudia even considering 
uh, quitting the job before or was it just like, you know, overnight decision? Because obviously she had a passion for uh, for going to, to the gym, to working uh, with, you know, with people and being there. And she really disliked her job. But I wonder if she had those thoughts or were they not popping out so obviously, because this really truly looks like that kind of Jerry Maguire moment, you know, it's like one moment and you just go to a place, you hear a motivational, I don't know, story or some advice, you go home and you just write your resignation letter. It's unbelievable. And it's like, you know, you you gather up your courage and you break through the fear and you go ahead and do it. It would be so interesting to know what were the consequences, yeah. how that did it change the life like immediately into a much better quality of life? Or is there still like a lot of fear involved in it? That would be really interesting to kind of have a follow up on that story. Well, I think that it would be also great maybe to invite Claudia once to our radio show. So we can talk about this because the topic is amazing. Yeah. But I uh, I have seen her and she looks uh, got them happy. Pro I would say, um, of course, now I'm reflecting on myself and I'm in a, let's say, more or less similar situation right now. And I think the fear probably would be still there, of course, because that's the magic of the job in corporation. It's a safe place. You know that you go there, you get your monthly salary and it's always the same. And that gives you a, some kind of, a, yeah, not some kind of, that gives you safety, right? But, um, but you know, it's like in a, in a moment when you literally dislike, I would, yeah, I think the word hate was <laughs> used there. I'm trying, uh, you know, to be diplomatic, but I am pretty sure she said she hated her job. It's like, and then you think about the, the, the price, you know, what will your fear stop you from getting out of the situation where you work somewhere where you literally hate going only because you are afraid you will stay there or will you just get this courage to get out of something you dislike and do something you love and i know that for many people this is still a struggle still a problem there are some people who are i, I worked in corporation who are complaining and talking about the fact that they really dislike to be there but they they just don't do anything. They 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 just took it as this is how it is. This is how how it goes, you know. So but I think the very interesting part here and that's also so much about your belief system. Your belief system you know what is happening around you and also what you believe about yourself because think about it. Like fact based is being in a corporation really so safe? I mean, like even taking Anna's story, uh, you have been in a corporation and so, uh, you know, safe. And then one day they have decided to change the structure. And from one day to another, you are not in the corporation exactly. any longer. So it's just a belief that we have that is safer to be yes. in a corporation. In reality, in corporation, you can be replaced within a week. You can have a situation where your boss doesn't like you and they can just fire you because they don't like you. You can have a situation where the organization changes. Someone, you know, just changes their mind. Uh, they want to give uh, a part of the company to another person and you are fired just because they changed the organization. The company can actually be undergoing trouble and, you know, uh, losing money. Uh, half of the company can be fired in one day. It's just a belief that is safer. Fact based. I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah, I think you are totally right. Uh, I think it's um, it's maybe because of the fact that when you are in corporation, you let's let's say until the moment when they will fire you, let's say, but very good points, Marta. This is all about beliefs. You have this like a uh, steady a uh, monthly income, you know, every single time how much you will get. And that uh, basically is that that's one thing, you know, because I think many people who are starting their own business, they are worried, you know, will I have always income because, you know, some months I can have customers, some other I will not. 
And I think um, it's that kind of that 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 is that safety that is uh, luring people into staying there because that gives them the sense of stability. And as we have mentioned already for the first half of this uh, uh, show, it's that the unknown is usually causing the fear when we don't know what will happen. This is why we react with fear, because we cannot predict. So I think that this pred predictability is the factor that uh, makes an illusion that corporation is a very safe place. Yeah, I think it's a it's it's a really interesting thing because I have been in a corporation for nine years and there were literally three years when people were being fired, you know, uh, frequently every month, every few months and so on, because company was having some financial trouble. So it was like a longer period where uh, people did not feel safe at all in the corporations. Uh, so it's uh, it's really interesting. Uh, yet, Claudia, has been feeling quite safe in that job, I guess. She didn't have any threat, uh, or at least we, we don't see it in the description that she could have been fired. She had to gather her courage and she had to work with that fear and go ahead and decide to go after her passion and make her dreams come true. But the reality is that her brain was producing the same kind of first reaction as if she was going to the jungle to fight with the tigers. Yeah, exactly. But you know, Marta, there is also one more thing that I, I was thinking about right now. Corporations or any companies or where you are employed somewhere, you know, it's not even only about the stability of the income, but when you are on your own, making your own business, that actually is, you know, scary as well, because then all those things, am I good enough? Will I make it? When you are in corporation, yes, you have to perform, but there are some structures, some rules, and you have some tasks, you learn them, and, and you kind of can just work there. When you are going on your own, actually you are faced with a lot of inner fears that are produced by maybe some doubts about your own abilities. I think when you have doubts in, about your own abilities, they will be influencing your life, whether you are in a corporation sure. or if you have your uh, own job or if you, I don't know, whatever you are trying to do with your life. But for sure, it's more difficult to take a decision to leave a job that feels uh, quite safe and go for, you know, uh, opening your own business. That's for sure. But we do also have another story. Yeah, I, I just wanted to say one more thing that I have pointed out at the beginning uh, about this one before we will get to another one. That bit about, you know, thousand faults. What will my parents and my friends say that I quit the job in a corporation and I'm going to work on a gym? And actually, that was also something that I have thought about because that is also a fear based reaction. I am afraid of what my mom will say, you know, or I'm afraid of what my, uh, I don't know, friends will say. And that is also something that I think a lot of people have to deal with. And I think in Claudia's stories, what I really love was that bit about her boyfriend who just said, quit your job, just do it, you know, and how important I think sometimes is to have a support from someone around you just to just to give you this encouragement because that decision the way she she put it or describe it it actually could have some uh, yeah repercussions from family you know depending on the family but you know it's like so now you just quit the very good job and you are going to work on a gym like what are you thinking you know so uh, i i can fully understand that and i love the bit about the boyfriend it was yeah. really really amazing but there are you know there are different families and there could be families that will tell you how can you even work in that corporation all these years when you have uh, different dreams and uh, i don't know it depends what kind of parents you have but definitely having support in life is a very uh, important thing because when people believe in you it's uh, much easier to believe in yourself too yeah, and I think that uh, with this uh, family support uh, or lack of support, I think many times we also have things in our head. So coming back to, you know, how much of our fear is real, because sometimes we imagine that people will say something or react in a way 
But in reality, actually, that might not be the case. Maybe we, we don't know what happened. So we don't know how uh, Claudia's parents or uh, friends reacted. And I hope we will find out. But maybe they were all supportive, you know. But the thing is that you have the thing in your head and you are afraid of what people will say when maybe in reality there was nothing to be afraid of. You know, that's another interesting thing. Definitely. But now we have also the second story and it's uh, it's, uh, really beautiful. And Marta is ready to read it. So you can go. So now we will share Marlena's story and uh, thank you so much for sharing this story with us. It's uh, it's really amazing. So listen up, guys. After a serious and severe brain disease, I got in India in November 2016 and am still recovering from. My recovery process is unfortunately really slow. I'm experiencing regular seizures and it involves being on strong anti-seizure medications that I am prescribed by the neurologists. The main side effect is depression and what doctors want to cure and what doctors want to cure it with is antidepressant meds. But I said no to them and work on it myself by doing what makes me the most alive and put the smile on my face And for me, what helps a lot is putting on a tune I love and dance my ass off to it. (laughs) Being as close to nature as possible. Yeah. um, That is a story we have received this morning, guys. And uh, it's it's from a girl that we know. Um, I haven't seen her for years. And when I read this story, I... I just got a, I got a hard squeeze, and it was not caused by fear. It was I, I was so touched um, and uh, amazed because this is a story that shows a courage of living life every single day the way you want to live it. It's a, it's that kind of a constant courage that you have to have uh, to say no to the things that you don't want to, I don't know, to the medications or or whatsoever. And uh, just living with with this. um, Yeah, it's it's truly inspiring for me. Yeah, for me, it has like two levels of courage. Uh, One of them is like, you know, you go to a doctor and the doctor thinks that the best for you is take some kind of medication that you don't believe is good for you. And you have to gather the courage to actually, in some way, like risk your health. Uh, because of your beliefs uh, that it's not good for you and you think you can do it in a different way. That's one very, you know, brave thing to do. And another courage is to actually wake up every day and try to make your life as good as possible. You know that you are recovering from a serious disease. You're, you're, Marlena, you're saying you're recovering slowly, but you put the smile on you put the tune on and you dance your ass of it. That's so beautiful. That's so courageous, you know, to wake up every day. You're probably in some way afraid of the seizure that you you might get at any point of time. You know that you have said no to the doctors because you stood up by your beliefs, what you think is the best for you. And now you have the gut to, you know, wake up every day and really, you know, fight against the condition that you have right now. Yeah, and this is actually extremely beautiful because unfortunately a lot of people um, who are uh, coping with uh, some chronic diseases, they are uh, they are losing this ability to to enjoy life. And I think a lot of it is caused by by fear indeed. Uh, So I'm actually uh, it's a pity that we cannot talk to you or get more information uh, about how are you actually doing it? Because when I try to think about uh, something like this happening to me, you know, of course, we like to imagine that, yeah, I would probably be courageous or whatsoever, but you never know how will you react when you are in a situation like this. So um, I try to imagine that and I I really think it requires a lot of uh, courage and a lot of um, 
yeah um yeah it's it's just amazing i'm 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 sorry i'm i think i'm far out for a moment <laughs> but uh, it's a it, it it's it's a pity we cannot talk to you because i would like to i would like to talk more and uh, and yeah get some details we are working on having that solution here uh, at the radio so that people can call us in so definitely hoping for being able to well well we can invite claudia because uh, as she wrote in her challenge she's in ohus mm -hmm. uh, so we are definitely hoping for having her in for an interview here but marlena she's far away She's very, very far away. I don't even know where exactly right now. I don't know, Marlena, if you're still in India or if you're somewhere else right now. But uh, we definitely hope for being able to talk to you over uh, over a phone call uh, in the future. But thank you so much for sharing that inspirational story for getting up your courage every day. Yeah, exactly. And I think sometimes the first uh, I was just trying to think about, you know, the story of Claudia and now the story of Marlena. And uh, with Claudia, uh, she said that she went, you know, sometimes maybe it was destiny. Uh, maybe it was coincidence. It depends what preferences you guys have. But Claudia just went on a, on a meeting, workshop, you know, organized somewhere. And within six hours, she gained courage to make a decision to change her life completely and just resign from the job. Um, and with uh, Marlena, I hope that there are people who are listening and who would feel inspired by the fact that it can be done, that you can have still a head high, uh, held high and a courage, even if you are in a, in a serious condition, uh, to just say, you know, fuck it, I will just live my life with a smile on my face, I will do the things I love, and I will not go into that, you know, dark fear. It's it's amazing. I, I'm, I'm, I'm truly inspired by this story. Yeah, truly. Do you, Anna, have any stories from yourself where you have, uh, you know, been able to exercise your courage? Unfortunately, a lot. <laughs> but a I, lot. Wow. But uh, yeah, I don't know if those are stories that would have any uh, educational purpose for the for the young listeners. If we have any young listeners, uh, but when I was thinking about this theme of twenty seconds of courage, actually, um, I was thinking about those. You know, um, have you seen Jerry Maguire? Yes. Those Jerry Mac Sven, have you seen Jerry Maguire? The movie? Uh, mm, no. No. Okay. So actually, this is kind of like a Claudia moment. You know, a guy is working in a what was his it's sports agency and he's really on the top of his game. He's a sport agent. And then he has this moment when he sees that, you know, this company is just like not for him and he uh, questions the moral values and what the business is based on. And he has that moment when he stands in the office and he says that he's quitting and he doesn't want to do it anymore. And is there anyone who's going with him? And only Renée Zellweger is going, that's the actress. But you know, then he has this speech and he simply just walks away from the door and he starts his own business. Um, and that's a really great movie, by the way, guys, you should watch it. And but that is that kind of 20 seconds of courage. Maybe there is something on the back of your head that is growing already, that you already have some thoughts. Maybe you are suppressing them. But when there is a time that is, let's say, right or something provokes you, you suddenly just gain this amazing courage and you do something that changes your life. And actually, Marta, I think here my first experience with this uh, 20 seconds of courage was actually it's a it's a story when I was a child and I think we actually have a similar stories um, it was a story when I stood up when I was eight years old or nine years old there was a bully in uh, in my school and it was a guy who was guy boy he was eight or nine I don't remember how old we were and he was really uh, bullying all the girls and he was really like you know really unnice and he was hitting us and I remember that one moment it was winter it was cold like hell and we were in front of the school waiting for our teacher because we were supposed to go walk on some kind of trip and I remember him running around and just you know like kicking the girls and teasing them 
And I got so upset. And, you know, actually, I was afraid of him before. I was, you know, a, a little girl. And I was never, like, a super courageous. I Actually, I don't recall it. But I remember at one point I got so upset and I thought enough is enough. And I remember how I just charged on him like a bull. And it was slippery. It was winter. And, you know, with the impact of my body, I kind of felt on him and I and I was laying down on him. And now, small disclaimer, I was a, a, a very heavy child. <laughs> so I think the physical impact was amazing on him because he was really skinny. And I remember telling to him, if you will ever hit any girl again, I will, I don't know, I don't think I said I will kill you, but I think I said I will beat you. And while I actually was able to put him down on the floor and um, he was unable to move, uh, I think it was quite convincing. And I remember I stood up and he stood up and he was just standing there somewhere uh, like in a corner of, of in front of the school on the playground, not touching anyone. He was in shock. But I remember... In that moment, when I did it, I didn't care. I was afraid of him before, all the girls were. But at the moment when I was like, enough is enough, I just did it and it, it was amazing. And the outcome of the story is that me personally, I was never afraid of bullies anymore. I was always, after that moment when I was eight, I was always standing up for others and also in my adult life it just disappeared. I am never afraid of people who are, um, you know, aggressive towards others because I know that many times their aggression is based only on the fear that they are scaring other people and that's the only power they have. Yeah. So, guys, today you have heard three stories of three courageous ladies. <laughs> One of them yeah. came when she was still a very small, la well, small is, you know, like a uh, small I was, heavy. <laughs> I was literally, sm no, not literally, I was actually quite huge. That's correct. Okay, but you've heard three stories of ladies that had some fear and they have managed to overcome it and show their courage to the world and one of them is still showing that courage in everyday life and is probably very inspiring to many other people but we hope that these stories were inspirational for you and that you will look at your fear and analyze which part of your fear is useful and serve you and which part of your fear is not very useful and it's worthwhile you know just you know taking out your courage and going for it yeah especially that uh from my experience and from what I could see, once you face your fear, there is a big chance you will get rid of it for the rest of your life. And with that note, we would like to wish you a great weekend. Yeah. And thank you for being with us. And if you have any comments, please visit the5options.com or you've got five options on Facebook. And we hope to hear from you. Thank you. Thank you very much, guys. Have an awesome weekend with no fear. Bye. Oh, a little bit fear. You are listening to You've Got 5 Options show. Remember that we are on air every Monday, Wednesday and every second Friday. Remember that you can visit our website www.you'vegot5options.com That is www.y-o-u-v-e-g-o-t-5 as a number options.com where you can submit your challenge and find our podcast. You can also find us on iTunes or any podcast app.